lot of opportunities running heavy equipment. These, this is a real career. I mean, and I think it's an industry. I mean, Chris, maybe I could get your opinion on this. That I think we're seeing fewer and fewer people going into, so the demand is going to go up, so the pay is going to increase. Absolutely. I mean, we uh, we we're seeing a huge skills gap as far as people stepping away from wanting to be in this industry. We we need help. We need people um, to get interested again. Um, to get to the point where they're in this equipment, um, there's going to be, there's probably going to be a, a shortage of operators if there isn't already, which I'm, I'm fairly certain there is. So we, we need people to, to reinvest and, and get interested in it. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of technology out there, a lot of cool stuff to get involved in. So please, please give it a, give it a thought and, and, and think about it. I think there's a shortage, a definite shortage of skilled operators. And I, I don't mean um, lever pullers, I mean actual operators. So when I say lever puller, that's a guy that can get in and he can make the machine sing and dance, but if something goes wrong with the piece of equipment, he can't troubleshoot it enough to at least get it to the next level. And right. I think an operator, think I think of an owner operator, I think of a person that not only can make that machine sing and dance, but at the first indication, they just sense something is wrong, they know what to do. Then what's the next step? Do they shut the machine down? Do they who do they call? What do they do? That is really those guys right. to a company. Those guys are gold. I mean, gold. When you got that guy, you do whatever you can to keep that guy smiling every day of the week. <laughs> if you want that guy around, that's for sure. Basic thing that you're gonna show us that not what not to do. Um, the first thing I'll show you guys is having the bucket angled too great. Okay. That we would go in and gouge a bunch of material out that we don't want introduced into the, the clean material that we're trying to sell to our customer or transport. So huge. we'll do that first. There's nothing like getting it uh, when they get that. You get, yeah. Everything's looking good, looking good. Then you got a bunch of dirt or fill coming out of your stone. And you can't, once once you get it delivered to the job site and you're trying to work with that stuff, there's no separating it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so Chris is the guy that can make this machine sing. I mean, I watched this guy yesterday, and I was just like, oh, I couldn't wait to get uh, get to this part of the video, because this guy's good. Too aggressive of an angle on that bucket. See that? That's getting down to the... We don't want that. See him float that bucket backwards? That's just intuitive. I mean, it's not intuitive. You'll get there. I, trust me, guys, you'll get there. All right, what's next, Chris? So next, I'll show you how what not to do as far as slipping the tires when we're going to, to load the bucket. Okay. Um, so I'll show you that, and then what the end result is after you slip the tires, what you have to deal with afterwards. Okay. so hard on the machine right there. See if we can get him to do it twice in a row. Hey Chris, yeah. can you do it like twice in a row? Because these guys, they're not just going to do it once and then fix it. Right. What's going to happen is they're going to do it once, and then they're going to back out, and then they're going to do it again, and every time you do it, it's going to get worse. Okay. And I'll tell you, I think what th this one mistake is what tires guys out more at the end of the day than almost anything else they can do because you're just going like this.
just abusing that machine. It's not what it was meant for. to load a truck too, Chris? Yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll drop this load. Yep. I'll dump this real quick. And uh, and then we'll um, we'll show them we'll show them the wrong way. Like getting it over like in a payloader, in a skid loader and a payloader, it's almost the reverse problem, isn't it? Right, you can't get it too you can't get it in the center. You're always <laughs> on the perimeter, yeah. Like with a skid loader, you're always you're always dro dropping it too close to the side, you're loading, and in a payloader, if you're used to running a skid loader, you're doing the exact guy you're putting it over too far on the other side ideally we're going to show you the right way to do it but we're going to show you the wrong way first and then we'll show you the right way. okay all right okay chris is going to demonstrate how not to load it first right chris yeah that's right stan Just by instinct, you can see how Chris lines up with the truck to make loading easier. So this is what happens when you've done it for so long. It's hard to, to do it wrong. You should load that entire load dead center every time. See how he's got that lined up in the perfectly dead center of the truck? Well, now he just fixes his other stuff. All his stuff. stuff. Perfect pour. That was a perfect pour right there. I gotta give him a little bit of crap. Hang on. Hey! What's wrong with you? See how I did. <laughs> you can't you can't even screw up screwing up. Like, I, what I was saying is when you first came into the pile, Chris, it was it was you've been doing I'm gonna guess you've been doing this so long that you just naturally angled your payloader right here so that you could just go straight over. A lot of guys, what they'll do is they'll come in this way, or they'll, they'll even how they, even how you go into the pile in relation to your truck is right and wrong. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you don't want to have to be turning and cranking the wheel and spending a bunch of time turning to, to, to get the, the material on the truck. You want to try to, you know, as a loader operator, you, you should be directing the truck where to park. That way you can do your best to shorten your cycle, your Y cycle to load the truck. So. Yeah. So that was the right way to, to actually angle your truck. Literally, can you hop back in and show us the wrong way to do it? Yeah. I mean, I really want these guys to visually see everything right, wrong, and in between so that they can go, aha. I would say one thing before I, before I go. Yep. Um, whenever we're loading the truck, depending on the size of the loader, if the bucket's, you know, if the bucket's smaller than the box of the truck, obviously we want to stagger the weight. So we want to, want to load one bucket in the back, one bucket in the front, 
and that way we're not just putting it all in one portion one pile inside the truck as well okay so that's a ah, that's an awesome point so yeah when we load trucks we'll load some to the front middle back because right. we're if we're loading with a skid loader that way we want that weight distributed ideally dead center of the truck yep and equally from the front dog house which this is the dog house right here this is the hoist point actually when you lift up i'll show them the dog house sure. all the way back to the tailgate but you don't want material resting on the tailgate that is a no 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 right. no no right. never resting on the tailgate okay so we're going to load this one all in the center but we're going to have a poor poor turning and poor cycle radius because then i can actually then i'll crawl into the truck and i'll actually try to show you guys how a, a load that's in a truck is done the right way. Watch as he pulls the truck away. See how his load is empty? That, that slight boom to the driver indicates that his load is cleared. There's a right way and a wrong way to drive a dump truck. I mean, I'll tell you straight up, I consider a dump truck to be the most dangerous piece of heavy equipment you can operate because you're actually taking that out onto the road with a world full of idiots. That payloader at least stays inside its inner circle, its working area, and you're less likely to run into, well, you'll have less idiots. So here it goes. This is uh, poor cycling, poor turning, poor, poor planning coming up right here. So his truck is there. Ideally, he should just come in, go right there. See this angle? Parallel with the truck. Bad. Ooh, he's even going up. Next. Parallel with the truck. See that? Now remember, guys, his load is going to be right. It's just his planning is off with this one. Look at he's tight to the truck. So he's got to slow down. He's got to be careful. He can't use the speed of the machine comfortably. He's got a pile in the wrong spot down here, so getting the load in right is going to be tough. Mm, so many things wrong with this picture. So watch, watch this load. As he pours, he's going to come forward just enough. You see those tires moving forward? Because he's compensating for the tilt of the bucket. So as the bucket dumps, he brings the machine forward and that keeps the load perfectly centered. He's parallel again with the machine. This time he's going to bring this load to the back a little bit more. Or not. Okay, watch him dump. Now watch the machine come forward as he's dumping. See that? That keeps that load right where he wants it. Now he can't see nothing guys, he can't see how that's going in. So that's going to take practice on you guys' part, really it is. Okay, now this next one will be... Actually, you know what, I'm done guessing. Seems like every time I guess I get it wrong, that's why we're here. There we go. That's a demonstration on poor planning. All right, guys. Well, you got to let me know if videos like this help you out in the comments down below, because if they do, then I'll keep making these. Now, the next video in the series is all about forks and attachments on payloaders. What else can I say about the next video? But it's going to be forking good, right? Um, but the last video in this series, Chris and I convinced my wife 
to crawl up into a Volvo 350, a million dollar payloader that weighs over 110,000 pounds, empty, and start to run it. Let's see if we can get her in it. So, you did really great on the loader earlier. So we'd, we'd like to uh, have your presence down here at the large one and see, uh, see what you think. Mm. <laughs> He's so much more polite than I have ever been. <laughs> get down here and get in that thing. <laughs> we would like to have your presence in the large one. I'm like, holy, those words have never came from my lips before. Right. <laughs> hey, do you want me to try to remember what he said and yeah, use that? You, you write, write it down. <laughs> I would like to have your presence in the large loader, my dear. is pretty cool. That's the last in this payloader series, but then we also convince her to get into other equipment after that. So hopefully this video's helped you out. You tell me. God bless you guys. Stick around because we got a lot more